Hello everyone, welcome back to Spread Dress Finance. In the last week, we have seen many retailers announcing massive dividend increases. This is good as it feeds more money into the investor's dividend model. This is a good time to discuss about the dividend growth machine. Here, the investor starts off by buying shares in a company. The company then makes profits and distributes these profits back to the investors in the form of dividends. Here, the investor has two options, either withdraw the dividends and treat it as an income or reinvest those dividends to buy more shares. Buying more shares means next time when the company announces more dividends, the investor gets more in return and the cycle continues, thereby forming the dividend snowball effect, wherein the dividends keep on growing throughout the life of that company being in the investor's portfolio. This is where it becomes more important for the investor to understand which company is being brought. In one of my earlier videos, I've explained in detail how to select quality dividend stock. Let us look at few of the retail companies who have declared massive dividends over the last week and see whether buying into those companies is justified or not. The first one on our list is TJX Companies, which owns brands such as TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, and Sierra. When we look at TJX performance, Year to date, it has minus 12%, last year minus 1%, and for the last 5 years, it has 70.68%. The yield of this company is currently 1.56%, and the PE is 20.81. Last week, TJX raised its dividend by 14% and also announced a share buyback of close to $2.5 billion. When you look at the dividend summary of TJX, it has a 5-year growth rate of 14.87%, which is very good, and the payout ratio is decent, under 39%. It has been growing its dividend only for the last one year. This is because when the pandemic started in 2020, majority of the retailers like TJX had reduced their dividends. When you look at the financials of TJX, the gross profit is increasing year over year from 2018, 2019 to 2020. And then we see a, a drop for 2021. The operating income, we see a massive dip for the year reporting 2021. This is because of the pandemic situation. The same applies to even uh, the net income. The dividend per share, here we can see a massive dip in 2021 because of that uh, cut in the dividends. Here, when you look at the free cash flow of the company, we can see it gradually increasing and then take a hit for 2021. As per track your dividends, TJX has a dividend score of 46. Here we can see the dividend scorecard uh, showing danger against EPS trends and the consecutive dividend growth. Here we can see the dividend per share going nicely till 2019 and then in 2020 it just falls off the cliff and then comes back in uh, 2021. Track your dividend shows uh, TJX is overvalued by 6.21% but I don't really agree with the, the logic that they use. Uh, so as per my dividend uh, scoring model which considers the current yield and the previous trailing four-year yield undervalued by almost 20% with a fair price of $80. Does that mean TJX is a good company to buy now? I would say given the current supply chain crunch situation we are in, retailers will see the situation creeping all the way into second half of the year. But with the pandemic easing and along with it, the supply chain also getting sorted out, I say TJX is a good buy for a long term. The dividend yield of 1.56% may not look so enticing, but the growth rate of almost 15% is really good. Next on our list is Carter's Inc, ticker symbol CRI, which is known for the infants and kids clothes brands like Carter's and Oshkosh. Year to date, Carter's is minus 4% over the last year, plus 2%. And over the last five years, it has given 7.6% returns. It has a yield of 1.44%, with a PE of 11.64. Last week, Carter's announced a dividend increase of 25%, and along with that, a buyback uh, program of up to $1 billion. With that, the quarterly dividend increases from 60 cents to 75 cents per share. When you look at the financials of the company, the gross profit, which was increasing uh, from 2017 through 18 and 19, takes a dip in 2021 because of the pandemic. Same is reflected even in the operating income and also the net income. Here we see the dividend per share, which is growing nicely for three years, then take a massive dip and then increasing. 
similar trend can be seen even in the cash flow increases all the way up to 2020 and then takes a dip from a dividend standpoint Carter's only has a 1.18 percent as the five-year growth rate which is very very less it doesn't even match the inflation of two percent as per track your dividends Carter's has a dividend score of 46 the dividend scorecard shows danger for the consecutive dividend growth and the eps trends and here we see the dividends per share which was rising nicely card dip track your dividends uh, shows uh, carters is undervalued by 15.55 percent but as per my own calculations carters is uh, 23 percent undervalued with a fair price of uh, 119 dollars i don't think carters is a good investment at this point it has a very very less growth rate of just 1.1 percent so the dividend that you get don't even match the inflation so I would stay out of it. Next on our list is Gap Inc. Ticker symbol GPS. Gap owns a brand such as uh, its own namesake Gap, as well as Old Navy, Banana Republic, and Athleta. Year to date, uh, Gap is down minus 16%. And over the last year, almost 42%. And for the last five years, it's minus 40%. It has a yield of over 4%. With a PE of 11.06. Last week, uh, Gap announced a dividend increase of 25%. So their quarterly dividend increases from 12 cents per share to 15 cents per share. Looking at the financials, Gap follows the same trend as Carters and TJX, wherein the pandemic year of 2020 has impacted their numbers. So you can see gross profit dipping in for 2021, same as operating income as well as uh, the net income. The dividend per share, which was stagnant for a while, then kept increasing and then dropped massively. When we look at the cash flow, falling for a while and then increasing and then there was a massive fall. So it's all over the place. From a dividend standpoint, uh, Gap has a five-year growth rate of minus 8.12%. So basically, you would, your dividends would be reducing over time, which is not a good sign. As per track your dividends, Gap has a dividend score of 45. Its dividend scorecard again shows danger for the dividend growth as well as EPS. Here in this chart, we can see the dividend per share, which was stagnant for a long while, then taking a massive dip. It shows a Gap undervalued by 28.4%. But by my own uh, dividend calculation, I found uh, it to be undervalued by 15%, the fair price of $17. I don't see Gap as a viable investment at this point. It has not shown any growth over different time periods. It has a dividend growth of minus 8%. So neither your investment is appreciating nor you are getting a better dividend over time. So I will stay far away from it at the moment. Next on our list, we have Foot Locker. Ticker symbol FL. Foot Locker is a very well known uh, shoes and uh, sports apparel retailer. Year to date, uh, Foot Locker has been down minus 33%, most of which was in the last uh, week because of a very poor guidance for the upcoming year. The last year it was down minus 45%, and for the last five years it is minus 61.25. It has a dividend yield of well over 5% and a PE of 5.71. These may look good, but the numbers can be misleading. Last week, uh, Foot Locker announced a dividend increase of 33%. So their quarterly payment increases from 30 cents per share to 40 cents per share. And also, they announced a 1.2 billion share buyback. From the financial standpoint, all the key metrics of uh, gross profit, operating income, as well as net income, what we see is uh, they kept increasing initially and they kept falling off the cliff because of the pandemic. So even the dividend per share, which was increasing for a while, took a massive dip. Even the cash flow follows the same trend. From a dividend standpoint, uh, it has a five-year growth rate of minus 1.89%, which is not good at all. Track your dividends uh, has a dividend score of 36 for Foot Locker. The dividend scorecard shows danger for the consecutive growth as well as EPS and the dividend per share as you can see again here goes on upward trend and then falls off big time. 
here we see Foot Locker being undervalued by almost 60%. But uh, as per my own calculations, uh, using the dividend uh, yields, I found it uh, to be undervalued by 31% with a fair value of $38. I don't see Foot Locker as a viable investment because it neither shows any price appreciation uh, nor do you see any benefit out of the dividends because the dividends are actually not growing at all. So I would stay away from this company. So of all the four companies that we saw today, I feel only TJX is the one that uh, investors can look out for. The remaining three, that is Carters, Gap and Foot Locker, investors can very well stay away from them at the moment. So that's my unbiased opinion about all the retail companies that we discussed in this video. The conclusion here is that uh, just because a company has given a massive dividend increase doesn't mean the investors have to jump into it and, and lap it up. We need to do our own due diligence into all the key metrics and make a very informed decision. Again, I say I'm not a financial planner and this video is just for educational and entertainment purposes only and you all should be doing your own due diligence into the companies you invest into. If you have liked this video, please click on the like and subscribe button so that you can be informed of all such informative videos in the future. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.